what's going on what i saying welcome back to my channel i am serene and today's video is a review of married at first sight season 15 episode 6. this is married at first sight so i have like proper notes i'm not too tired um and yeah i am running late though this is seeming to be a theme but yeah we have to go in a bit so i'm gonna try and make this as fast as possible so this episode was called um saved by the mariachis <laughs> and yo literally it was like saved by the mariachis so we're gonna just talk about each couple we're gonna talk about the series couple by couple and we're gonna start with alexis and justin and this time i definitely have not made a mistake in mixing up who people are because you know we're still trying to get used to it and after this episode they're going back home and this is where the good stuff start to happen because the previews for next episode child just when i thought alexis and justin was going good <laughs> the animals done mess things up but you know let's talk about um alexis and justin oh i think i just hit my mic so sorry but let's talk about alexis and justin so the girls meet up to have brunch i think it was as in the episode starts with the girls at brunch and the guys going for tequila tasting like yo tequila tasting over brunch any day excuse me <laughs> i love tequila <laughs> i love tequila like yo ah before covid and all of the everything that's happening now man i used to be whiskey tasting rum tasting don't like gin so never went to that wine tasting yo all the tastings mm -hmm. good stuff good stuff good stuff but anyways the guys at tequila tasting the girls gone to brunch and they're talking about basically their different experience with their men and stuff like that and alex just basically said you know like justin being sensitive is really really hard and she has to like continuously consider him because he always considers her in everything <clears throat> that he does and says whereas that's not natural for her and i get it you know like i feel like when people or women have like really strong personalities like very um type a personalities like that sensitive like or continuous sensitive side isn't there like women are naturally like emotional and sensitive or at least we express it in a way that seems or appears to be a lot weaker because we cry about it or complain or whatever but type a personality women like myself there's a lot of things that don't really get to you until it gets to you not everything so being sensitive or concerned about certain things especially when you have a sensitive partner is very very important and i'm glad that she recognizes it obviously it is hard because you have to consider their feelings and what's not but at least it's something that she recognizes and she is working on but she did say it's hard but nonetheless as the episode progresses you'll see where we get to so then Alexis and Justin and another scene Alexis and Justin go on like I don't know what that is considered like yacht sailing but not really yacht like they're on a boat floating going somewhere doing something sailing I guess and yo they get back on shore and she was just like yo I've been waiting for marriage to get hard and then you know they discuss discussing they they spoke about the fact that they need to discuss um budgets and finances when they get back to child where is it san diego <laughs> san diego i think yes san diego and you know she she openly said you know how would you she asked justin how would it how does it make you feel that i make more than you and you know i thought i was looking for like the micro reactions from him but he didn't have any like he didn't seem to really care and, and i think that's a big um well, it could be a problem, but let's, we'll see what, how this develops. But I think that is a really big thing for him to be so comfortable with because the reality is with men and their egos, like a lot of men would not feel comfortable or would not be open to something like that or might feel a way if it's said out loud. And he did not seem to care. He was just like, you know, it's fine. He was he, he he thought that you know they balance each other out and so that wasn't a really important thing for him which i commend to be honest especially with the way he held he dealt with it because like i was like girl you had to say that shit. you know the cameras are there you did not have to say that you know but she said it and he was fine with it and i think that's pretty dope you know but she was like oh you know i've been waiting for marriage to get hard i've been waiting for this 
did not the Lord send a sign? The Lord told the wind, lift them up, and the boat get up with them. And she was scared. Thank God, Justin long like a um a breadfruit stick, and he just hold up the little yard, talking about you know, see, I'm like Superman. I'm like, <laughs> you are not a clock hen, but you know, I know where you're going with this. And he did ensure that she was safe and protected, which was really really nice. Um. I don't remember when Alexa said that Justin was her biggest blessing. Oh, she was talking to what's that girl's face? She was she and Kirsten went out together. They were talking, and you know, Alexis is telling Kirsten, you know, she's team Mitch, and you know they're discussing. But she's telling Kirsten like, yo, you just need to look at hit the small wins when it comes to him to ensure you know that you're gonna be okay because Alexis was saying you know like. Justin and I matched on I think it was hinge the dating app and she she ignored him She thought that he was skinny or you know, he wasn't what she was looking for aesthetically And she said no fast forward now like she was willing to walk away from the best blessing of her life Which is Justin, you know, <laughs> and that's what she's referencing the best blessing of her life Just because she was looking at the outward appearance or having very vain and shallow expectations from men and turns out they're back together they've been matched and she could have started her like six months way before you know probably wouldn't have been married because you know we'd have take we would end up taking her time or she would have ended up taking their time but they still ended up where they probably would have been and she's just like she would have walked away from the biggest blessing in her life so she's telling first you know like take your time and just count the small wings with mitch cool so I wrote down here that Alexis need to mind her business. Now, I don't even know why Alexis need to mind her business, but apparently Alexis needs to mind her business. Oh, let me tell you why I said Alexis said you need to mind your business. So they ended up on a group date, right? And you know, everyone is talking about their partner and basically justifying what they bring to the table or what they expect. But you know what they expect when they go back home and so forth. And, you know, people are asking Alexis, well, what do you offer Justin? Because we're hearing about all the things that Justin wants to do for you. And Alexis said, yo, I take care of this man spiritually, physically, mentally. I'm there to support him. She said, mind your business. Justin is taken care of. Don't worry about what's going on, going on in our household because I love this man. And I was like, did she say she loved him? And, you know, he heard it. She said it. And she was there acting all cute and shy, but she told him that she loved him. And, you know, the episode before, episode five, he said that he loved her. So, you know, their relationship is moving. It's not moving as other people would expect because she's not as expressive or, or um, emotionally or sensitively driven to state like, yeah, you know, this is how I feel. Whereas he's going to tell you. But she's gotten there in the end, you know, and she's gotten there in the end in her own pace. Another thing I liked about her was Justin was advocating for Bin when Morgan was talking about all the things she wants and nothing that Bin needs. And Alexis was like, yo, you know, when they got back to the hotel room, she was just like, you know, I understand that, you know, like he's your friend and stuff, but he wasn't saying anything for himself. And to be honest, he sat there and never said anything but alexis is like he didn't say anything for himself just because he's hurting doesn't mean that you're supposed to hurt for him and i was like word <laughs> that was like the best advice ever and then he started to tease her but you know tell me you love me again and she said it and then he was like say it again say it again and she started teasing talking about his coco melon face ass i swear that's what she said and i screamed i was like <laughs> First of all, that is an insult. <laughs> but he did not care. He was having fun. The fact that she said that she loved him and he was dancing, you know, all happy and stuff. And, you know, I'm really liking the way that their relationship is progressing. But in the previews for one of the episodes, I don't know if it's going to be next week or not. When they Well, it should be next week because they're introducing the dogs. And Justin dogs done eat up Alexis' dog. And, you know, people with animals or pets, should I say. They don't play around with their pets because pets are like family 
and she was just like yeah she can't stay in the house with justin because she doesn't feel safe so i would like to know what got her to that point obviously if her dog did that she probably if his dog did that to her dog she probably just thought that you know like his dog isn't trained properly you know his dog isn't safe to be around so it will be interesting to see how that progresses now we have Kristen and milch now Kristen, when she was with the girls and they're having brunch she was just like, yo, let me, before I say this, I just need everyone to be team Mitch. And I respected that because even when you're complaining about your partner to friends or family, they need to still understand like, yo, we are, I am with this person and this is the person I'm choosing to be with. So no one is supposed to judge them. Um, no one is supposed to cancel them. The only person doing the canceling is me. And when I decide to do so, and she was just like, everyone needs to be team Mitch when I tell this. So then she goes on to say, you know, after they had the tequilas in the last episode and, you know, they were eating strawberries or whatever. After he told her that he, he, she ugly. Okay, he didn't say that, but <laughs> he said that he didn't find her attractive. Same thing. And, um, you know, she said that, you know, when they got into the hotel room, he pounced on her and she literally had to be like, yo, this is not how this is about to go down. You know, like this is my show now. So if you're feeling this type of way, there are rules to this and I am controlling it now because you can't tell me I'm ugly, which is what she did not say, but whatever. You can't tell me I'm ugly and then seconds later try to jump my bones. That's not how it go. But apparently he said, you know, the way she handled him telling her that she was ugly, he found that attractive. Now, that is a red flag for me because I don't understand how you could insult me when you don't know me insult me on national tv and then tell me the way i took the insult you find that attractive excuse me am i an emotional punching bag because what is that i i don't get that but you know to each their own da, da, da. but then when she's met, when she met with alexis and when she met with alexis and they were talking and you know she's asking for advice and stuff um, you know, she said that Mitch said that he's beginning to feel like it is a relationship. So this goes back to where Alexis was saying you're going to have to, you know, count the small wins with him because he hasn't been in a committed relationship for a while. So you're going to have to count those small wins with him. And if he's beginning to feel like it is a relationship, then that is definitely a good thing. You know, at the group meeting, Kristen tells everybody she's ready to be a housewife. Kristen said, I'm cooking, I clean. I do all of that. She's not like Cardi where she's like, I don't cook, I don't clean, but let me tell you, I got this ring. No, she's just like, I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm catering. That is my role. And she's just like, that is what I'm signing up for. But at the end of the group date, child, I saw that she and, um, what he name? She and Mitch get in the bed and Mitch bottom foot were black. I was just like, y'all don't show up. Like, even like where are you walking that your foot bottom look like that sir and then they get into bed with the outside clothes on mm, okay whatever <laughs> i like that but you know all in all at the end of episode six it seems like mitch and kirsten are in the going in the direction of trying to walk it up but you know we've seen this before because i have likened mitch to basuda hashtag Chris and remember when Chris and Paige did what they did you know he wasn't feeling it then he had started to feel like it was something at the end of the honeymoon and then as soon as he touched back in reality he was gone again so we just need to watch Mitch with one eye open like this to see what which really really wants and what he think is actually happening because I ain't sold on it yet because I don't understand how in 12 hours you go from I ain't attracted to you to this feels like a relationship. Yeah, I fall for that shit. So then, Morgan and Ben were on a yacht or some boat. And, you know, Ben is talking about, you know, family and finances. Those are his moral values. You know, family, finances. And Morgan is talking about how she hasn't spoken to her dad in years. You know, like, she does have some toxic family relationships. And I mean, like, the most of us do, you know. That's just how it is sometimes. But Ben... Ben, you know, I am not upset with Ben because I know there are some men and some women that are very much like they would not date you if you come from a broken home or 
you know, if you don't talk to certain family members, they find it weird. But these are people that typically have always had family members that are, you know, consistent in their life. You know, the toxicity doesn't exist in their lives. And when they meet people that you say like, oh, I don't talk to this person in my family, or I don't talk to that person in my family, they can't begin to conceptualize it. And I think sometimes it's just naivety and, you know, just being sheltered while growing up, honestly. Because if you don't know families don't work out, I don't know, as an adult, I don't know what's wrong with you. But, you know, that's his thingy. But then it turns out that Morgan was telling him, hey, this is a secret. I finished my BSN. So then he's just like, well, if you finish your BSN, how are you a nurse? And I'm like, yo, yeah, how is she a nurse? But then she did. She, she said she did her nurse practitioner courses. So I don't even know how it works. I don't know how it works in the U.S., so I can't comment on that. But says, if you're a nurse, why is it a secret? And also, you ain't even have a bachelor's? You know, I, I found... I don't know as the episode went on i found morgan interesting you know like she did come out and say you know she doesn't forgive easily and that's what she should have said not talking about oh if you say something in your words i can't forget and i am going to take it to heart this isn't someone that's trying to work on you know forgiving or anything she's telling you like listen come rain hell fire and brimstone i will not forget what you said to me and I find that is a hard like line to make, especially to a stranger, someone that you don't know, someone that you haven't built that friendship with, someone that has to learn you. I think that's a very hard line for you to draw and say, I basically won't forgive you. That's what I heard at least. Um, you guys tell me what you think you heard or understand from it. But she is doing all of that and she's talking about her debt she's talking about these things and ben is basically saying like he said i like that you know and i'm trying to figure out what is her job title he seems like he's confused and i think rightfully so because maybe in his head he's thinking you know like these are linear things he is an engineer he's expecting you do your bachelor's you do your nurse practitioner how how did you do it backwards I don't know, but you know, I think his concerns are valid, but I also think her concerns are valid as in he is, she's told him that he didn't have to seek, um, clarification through someone else, which is what pissed her off. And she was crying. She's like, Oh, I trusted you. And in my head, I was thinking like, mm, but do you need to cry though? Like, is it that serious? But just, I guess we're different. Cause I don't know what she was bawling for, her, but at a group meeting morgan is talking about all that she wants you know when i come home from work i don't want to have to take care of anybody it genuinely sounded crazy to me <laughs> she was just like when i go and i do my hours at work work is stressful when i come home i don't want to take care of anybody i don't want to talk to anybody i don't want anyone to do and i was just like girl you have a whole husband do you know these these grown men are actually like little boys sometimes so what do you mean you don't want to do anything? I remember when we first learned and met Ben, he was talking about his mom does this for him, his mom does that for him, and he basically wants a mom replacement. Let's be real. That's what he wants. He wants someone that he could have a relationship with, but that could also cook food for him and clean for him and be that person that his mom would normally be and then also give him kids. And honestly, Morgan isn't there. She She's not ready to take care of it because, one, she should have, even if she felt that, that's not something you say, oh, loud in front of people so one she's not ready for that two with her having so much debt student student um student what do you guys call it student loan debt um uh, with her not finishing her bsn with her not understanding that you know you 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 both have to take care of each other you can't just come home and say, well, I've been a nurse for 20 hours. I don't want to take care of you. That's not technically how it works. You know, like there needs to be some balance and reciprocation. She is not ready for kids. Like, that's my point. Like, she's not ready for all the things that Ben is ready for. And I'm intrigued to see how this is going to go. And quite a few people did bring her up on it. I think Alexis also chimed in like, okay, if you do all of that. And you could see the side conversation between Alexis and Justin. And I'm like, yo, yes, she is looking for a roommate because... That's exactly what it sounds like. She's just like, yo, stay in your room. I'll stay in mine when I come home. Let's not talk. We could meet for dinner every now and again. I have chats, but <laughs> stay out of my way. And that's literally how it sounds. So we'll see how Bin fits into her life. Because that's what it sounds like she wants. Someone that can fit into her lifestyle. 
but we'll see how this progress um at first i was thinking that they were a really good match but when it comes down to morals and like life path and expectations i don't necessarily think they're a good match and i am not too sure that they are gonna last then we talk about linea miguel no lord yo i think they were a the couple that shocked me the most in the beginning because i was like somebody that made it seem like sex was so important to her she was talking about you know the connection and them not even agreeing on how love works and then they're the first to have sex she had sex with him and you know she defended it she said sex seemed natural it seemed you know like the right progression for her and you know Stasia was saying like yo how did you get from that part to that part and she's saying stuff like you know I thought I think that I don't know she 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 said that you know it was a good progression for her like she that's what she wanted to do and she was not for it and Stasia has some serious trauma attached to I guess being forced to have sex or just being forced to make decision with men because she put on a ball in and I was like girl like she was so worried about that that she became worried about being like about lindy being forced by miguel and hoping that you know miguel didn't force her to you know to have sex now my thought process are when i listen to me um lindy speak and miguel speak first of all i don't think miguel likes lindy because lindy talks a lot and miguel isn't actually listening to a lot of the things that she says but then also we have the fact that um we have the fact that with everything that miguel says lindy technically disagrees but then in another scene you'll see her agreeing and i am gonna chalk that up to her just being a bit naive she seems like she grew up because she grew up in the church and it seemed like she had very very strict parents as it, as it relates to religion I think she led, she led a very um, sheltered life and as a result that sheltering has made her very naive to, um, to the wall in terms of like making her own decisions and being able to stand her ground in stuff and I think this is why she spirals so much because she's trying to process it and doesn't know how to process different things because I grew up in church and my mom was strict but she, we still had a certain freedom of certain liberties that allowed us to not be naive and i lindy seems like she didn't get that she seemed like she was very much coddled so from go i and i so this is why i understand stasia's reaction this is why i understand everyone else's reactions of oh like you're not being honest about the way you feel because she literally went from sex is something that i noticed was like very much henrik que pasa? she very much came from you know sex was something that i i thought i felt very guilty about or i felt was very demonizing or you know like i judged myself for having sex to very much like popping it open for a stranger and not a stranger her husband but you get what i'm saying like she very much flippy flopped on that you know that idea and to be honest um she then told them how she felt you know like he said oh i'm giving you two months and that's it but then we went to dinner and then she was just like you know she understands that he needs to move at his own pace so i generally don't understand like where and how she sits and i generally feel she, she probably feels like she's giving herself or her body over to this man and no he doesn't seem like he's sure about wanting any of this because remember he said he needed sex to fall in love but she doesn't know how he feels about them so no i think she's trying to like just tiptoe around it to just hope that if she's compliant enough he's gonna get comfortable but that's not the way to do it that's not the way to do it you're supposed to be crazy from the jump so they know that they like you from the jump like don't be playing all sweet be crazy from the beginning that is the hack if no one ever said anything now we're going to talk about stasia and nate oh one more thing 
Morgan, not Morgan, Lindy told Stasia that, you know, Miguel has some questions about Nate's authenticity and his real reason to for being on a show because, you know, Nate is a bit too curated. Like, he seems like he's the person that films and snaps and Instagrams everything about their experience. And Stasia basically said, mm -hmm, like, she, she recognizes that, um, you know, she does have some questions about his genuine reasons for being on the show and stuff and i'm like oh now they're trying to say that nate is trying to be an influencer <laughs> but when stasia and nate first appeared they were having a picnic you know stasia put together a picnic for nate apparently both of them are afraid of bugs when you um but you know she's trying to show him his show him her appreciation for him and you know for them to talk what I realized about Nate and Stasia is that they don't have deep conversations about stuff, at least not on camera. Like Stasia would try to speak about stuff and Nate kind of just, he echoes what she says, but he doesn't ever delve deep into himself. She is trying to have these deep connected conversations and he's not going any further. He's very much like the top level. Like, is that the epidermis? Like, if you were to talk about skin, like he's not going skin, skin deep at all. Like he's trying to just coast it, which I think is eventually going to be a problem for Stasia because she's older than him. She needs that connection. Um, and I feel like based on how her past has gone, especially with her reaction to Lindy's decision to have sex, she's going to need someone that she knows is going to invest in her. She's going to need someone that she knows is willing to be vulnerable with her she seems to be sensitive behind like a hard exterior at least that's what i get from her but during a group meeting stasia then we learn that stasia is building a house nate is talking about stasia is building a house and everybody's like nate you hit the jackpot and i'm like yo why is that everyone's reaction so then it makes me really believe that a lot of people are thinking that yo he's probably just here for the come up like he's not genuinely there because now he hit the jackpot and then shady um shady mitch shady mitch was like oh so your wife is building you a house and i'm just like that's why I heard too. <laughs> but you know, Stasia has invited Nate to live in the house that she's building so that they can live together, you know, and he seems happy with it, you know, so if he like it, I love it. But when they go back home, Stasia is talking about her insecurities of being enough for him. And like, baby girl, like, have you seen Nate? I promise you, you are enough. You are more than enough. Um, because we still don't know what Nate does because he day trades. Like, how good of a trader are you, baby? <laughs> I ain't falling for it. We don't know if he has any money. So, oh, we're just going to see Mr. Day Trader. But, yeah, Stasia is still on the fence. I can see it. I think she likes him, but she's on the fence. And that is what's prolonging the intimacy that Nate wants. Cause what, Nate wants that intimacy but he just hasn't gotten it and i think stasia is really just you know like let us let us get to know each other but i still am on the fence with their relationship i don't know if they're gonna work or not work but i'm still i'm more leaning towards not work because i just don't think that he's where she is at like they're not on the same page they're not in the same mindset at all and I think eventually that's going to be the downfall of their relationship. But guys, this brings me to the end of my review of episode 6, Married at First Sight Season 15, episode 6. Now guys, comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Let's have a whole discussion about this. I think this season is starting to look up because, you know, the past few episodes were just long and boring. I didn't have enough juice, but, you know, people are now relaxing and they stand to see how they feel and talk about each couple and like, you know have their side conversations about what they think is going wrong so thank you guys so much for watching let's have a conversation in the comment section and remember to like comment share and subscribe for more videos like this bye